So what the thing I find most fascinating about this is that there's this new global platform being created with speeds exceeding both in computing, in connectivity, and in visual resolution, human brains all over the world. So now when those human brains are put together in, with this enabling technology, it's a little bit different than than the worry that the software is, you know, going to take over the world and you know make humans into slaves or whatever. That may happen yet, but first of all, what's happening is humans are getting more powerful because they can get their brains working with each other with robotic generators of DNA arrays or interplanetary images, and that is sort of the next, going to lead to the next generation of what Tom Friedman talked about in The World is Flat. He was saying back in 1500 to 1800, nation states like the Netherlands, Spain, uh, England, uh, became global powers. And then globalization 2.0 was really when corporations and, and, and developed that kind of power you see today. And globalization 3.0, which he said, starts in uh, 2000, really empowers individuals to work together on this global scale. Now, the interesting thing is, if you've ever read his book, which you should all have read his book, um, it's very, very insightful. He's talking about how the shared internet and the web and, and shared global software has caused this revolution. Well, that stuff's you know, the internet was in the 70s, right? Web was in the early 90s. This stuff is one to two decades old. So he's talking about what happens when that kind of stuff has been adopted on a global basis. But what we're talking about is with these dedicated fiber paths, streaming HD, the world isn't gonna be flat. It's really gonna be like reduced to a single point that we're all in. And I think that's as much a part of the transformation that Ray envisions as the artificial intelligence piece is. Um, and something that, you know, Singularity University ought to really be considering.